Hello, Team Easy Dating. Welcome to the live stream. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to ask me anything. So if you've joined us, this live stream is for you. And I'm going to stay here for a while to answer all of your questions. Um, so hop in the comments. And if you have any question around dating, love, relationships, sex, online dating, plop it in there. If you have went on a date or two with someone and you're wondering what to do, if you've been in a relationship for five months, for six years, for 10 years, and you're having problems, let's talk about it. Let's find some solutions. I'm sure you're not the only person who's watching this that's had those issues. Shoot, I'm sure I've had those issues. And for those of you that tried to tune in on Tuesday, I am so sorry that the live stream never went off. I 100% am going to make it up to you if you're here today. If you weren't here, uh, some of you have already sent me emails with your questions, and I've tried to respond to most of you, um, if not all of you. Um, so anyway, I got your back. Welcome to the event, guys. And um, I'm so excited for you to be here. Um, once again, go in the comments. This is live. Um, type in a question, and I'm going to answer it right now. Um, so let's do this. Um, now, we've got some side topics while I'm waiting for your questions to come in. Um, so let's talk about what men need in order to commit forever. <sighs> wow. Wow. Oh, I should probably bring the microphone over, huh? That might help. Hello, guys. Microphone. I've done this before. Maybe. <laughs> All right. What do men need in order to commit forever? So I want to start. Um, I've kind of built like a little pyramid of what men need. And the top is kind of what they need in the early stages of dating. And then it kind of comes down. And the bulk and the foundation of the pyramid is built on some other things. Um, so first, I want to talk at the top of the pyramid. And it's all based on the emotion that they are feeling when they're with you. And I want to make this very clear. First off, any man you meet, they all want different things. But... If I poll 3,000 people, which I've done, men do have some commonalities and common threads of what they need in a partner to commit. But with that caveat being said, always when you meet a man, talk to him and say, what do you need in a partner? And then when you get there, what do you need to commit to someone forever? What are you looking for? And a lot of the time they've made up their opinion about you. Um, I've talked to you guys about this in the past that men decide who they're going to fall in love with on average by date two. And women decide on average by date 14. So realistically, they've probably made their mind up about you by date two-ish. And so let's say you've been dating for a year or two and they're still you know, not quite ready to propose. They probably have some things that maybe they feel like they need to get out of their system before they can drop to a knee. And to them, it's important. And so you kind of, um, you should go through this process with them, just like you want to feel heard, validated, supported. Well, he wants to feel like you care about his needs. And they're going to be a little different. And they may sound silly to you, but they're things you need to do. For example, a lot of the times, especially men that are, you know, late 20s, early 30s, maybe they didn't get to accomplish the things in their career or the traveling and all these things that are possibly, um, you know, right before maybe you're going to get married and have children where it might be a little more difficult to do some of these activities. And for those folks that are, you know, in their 50s, 60s, maybe you're not having to deal with this, but you're dealing with different things where maybe a guy says, well, I can't do that until, you know, my business hits $10 million or, you know, I haven't been to Europe yet. Anyway, listen to what he says. If he says, you know, I want to go to a Nordic country, I want to know what it's like to have the sun out for 23 hours um, of the day. Well, then be like, great. 
when do you want to go? Let's plan it and start getting these things on the books and start fulfilling the things he wants to do and have fun on them. I mean, you're going to enjoy them as well. All right, back to my pyramid. Now, if you're tuned in, this I don't want this to be about me talking about what I want to talk about, although I love it. Um, I want to talk about what you want to talk about. So go in the comments and start asking me questions. Say hello. If you're even here, tell me what city you live in. I live in Los Angeles right now, and I'd love to know where you guys live. And then let's go a little deeper. Ask me some dating, relationship, sex, online dating questions, because I want to answer what you want to talk about. All right, top of the pyramid. For a man to commit forever, he needs to feel this emotion, and the emotion is fun. That's what he wants to feel with you. So men and women, we go about our lives just in like do 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 like robot mode, boom, 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 like from action to action, completing our tasks, completing our goals. Think about what happens when you wake up in the morning and you, let's say you have a nine to five job. It's like you wake up, you're like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym, check, accomplish that. All right, I need to shower. I need to eat breakfast. I need to put on a suit or I need to put on whatever clothing I need for the day. All right, I accomplished all that. Now I got to go to work. All right, I've got 100 unread emails. My boss wants me to do this. All these tasks. Then you come home, you're like, all right, I need to make dinner. I need to feed the dog. I need to do whatever I need to do. Oh, I told myself I was going to read this book for an hour that's going to teach me something. All right, I read the book. Oh, I promised myself I was going to do online dating for 30 minutes. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, time for bed so I can wake up and rinse, rinse, repeat. Now, it's not really fun. It's routine. It's completing tasks. It's kind of what we've been trained to do at this point is accomplish things the American way. Strive, strive, strive. Where, how do I get to the next step? How do I keep improving? But the man, when he's with you, it's not about these goals. It's not. I mean, it could be a little bit, but he wants to have fun with you. This is his downtime. And the way a man's brain works is he's very fortunate. This is a man's superpower. His superpower is that when he is not at work and in fun mode, he literally turns off one side of his brain and allows work mode, the work side of his brain, to literally relax and take some time off. And then the other part of his brain that is fun mode is just enjoying it, having fun, and it's allowing this side to de-stress, to relax, to get a second wind. Women have a much tougher time with this. And their superpower is that they have 10 times more receptors between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of their brain, which makes them amazing in the sense that they're using both sides at the same time, which much more effectiveness than what a man does. So... Let's talk about the man's superpower. So he's turning this off. He wants to have fun with you. And we don't know what fun looks like for this individual man. So we need to ask him, what does he enjoy doing? And does it align with what you enjoy doing? And do you have the same values? And once all these things are aligned, then you guys can have fun together. Um, does that make sense, guys? If you have any questions about that, throw that in the comments. Hello, welcome. A bunch of you just signed in late. What we're talking about is what do men need in order to commit forever? And what we're also doing is if you have any questions about anything, drop it in the comments and we're going to talk about that so I, will, I don't have to talk about my questions. All right, so top of the pyramid, we said the guy's got to have fun. Now, we drop down. This is what gets us to date two and he's having fun. So he's Basically, the way his, his brain works is he goes, all right, I got here. Is she good looking? Yes, no. If yes, how am I feeling when I'm with her? Am I having fun? Yes or no? Yes. All right, am I? do I love this woman? Does she have everything I want? That's it. It's pretty – that's it at a high level. And that's the order of it, too. A man is 
going to base his decisions on looks at first. If he's not attracted to you, he's not going anywhere. It's not going to happen. Um, men are wildly different than women. Women have this magical power, and it's been proven in a scientific study that they can become attracted to a man based on personality. Um, specifically, the study, what it showed is they had men and women rate sexual attractiveness on a 0 to 10 scale. And so let's say a woman rated a guy, uh, looked at a picture of him, uh, a yearbook picture specifically, and gave the guy a four of attractiveness. Then they let them talk to this man. If he had an amazing personality, she could re-rate the guy, for example, an eight versus another guy that's a four, terrible personality. She re-rates, it goes down to a zero. So what we learned from the study is women could move men four full basis points on attractiveness. But men doing the exact same experiment, let's say a woman's a seven on attractiveness, great personality, seven becomes an eight. Um, terrible personality, seven becomes a six. So men are not moving women. If they're attracted initially, awesome, and it's not really going anywhere. So that's why at the top of this thing, when men go, is she hot or is she not, this is important for a man. And also for a woman, but what's amazing, once again, is if she gets a guy that's a four and then he has an amazing personality, that turns into an eight. And typically what I'm finding over the last 10 years of doing this is that women are, and, and men, are typically ending up marrying what they consider an eight of attractiveness, but the compatibility is a 10. Um, so it's it's pretty neat, and it's consistently what we're seeing. All right, top of the pyramid, fun. We're coming down. Now, to commit forever. Um, we built an acronym that really depicts this. It's called NAB. And picture me doing this so you'll remember this forever. you got to NAB a man. So you're nabbing him. Nab, nab, nab. So what this means is a man needs to feel needed. So um, this is so important, uh, especially with in today's society, all you women out there are just super independent. And independence is is sexy it really is it is a sexy thing but our men lost their role their job a hundred years ago or more for the most part men were in the workforce and they were needed they brought the money in and the woman took care of the household and she thanked him and it was okay now obviously uh, both parties are typically working, and all the women watching out here have amazing careers, have their own money, have their own income, and can do everything themselves. And even the things that men um, are typically known for is our, our strength. Um, women can just hire people. They have money. They can hire a moving company. They can do whatever. And women have gotten to this point of everything they do at work, they're like, I have to do it myself. And we've gotten out of feeling comfortable saying, hey, can you help me with this? But men have not lost craving feeling needed. So how do we accomplish this in the early stages of dating? How do we accomplish this later? So in the early stages, let's say you go for coffee. You go to Starbucks and you get a coffee and then you sit down and you forgot to get some sugar or milk or whatever. You say, hey, Mike, would you mind grabbing me some sugar? And I'm like, ooh, something to do. I get up there. I grab some sugar. I hand it to you. And you say, wow, you're such a gentleman. Thank you. And I feel needed. And then what you also did was the A in NAB. You made me feel appreciated. You said, thank you. You're such a gentleman. Now, this is just a small example, but these things build up, especially when you're in a relationship or a long-term partnership. This is what every day looks like. And how are you going to show up for your man? 
Are you going to ask him for things? Are you going to make him feel needed? And most importantly, are you going to feel comfortable doing this? And are you going to start enjoying it? Because for you independent women out there, this might feel very uncomfortable at first. Like, I could get my own sugar, Mike. Like, come on, man. I can do this. It's right there. I can walk. I have my own legs. But you're missing an opportunity to connect with your man. When you ask him to get there, you're bringing him into the equation. You're making him part of your routine. You're getting him involved. And then when you appreciate him, now he's got a spot. He's got a spot next to you. He's got a home where someone actually needs him and appreciates him. And this makes sense for him. Because majority of women go about their day being super independent. And they're missing some opportunity. Now, on top of this, imagine what this can do for you. One of the top things women um, in surveys we've done fill out that they want is to feel supported, to feel listened to, to feel validated. So in terms of supported, what if a man was able to help you with things? Imagine how magical that could be instead of having to do everything yourself. Like if you've been single for a while, you're used to doing everything yourself. But that's part of the benefit of a relationship is you give him opportunities to help you. And think about it. If you've got this whole laundry list of activities that you both do independently, on this list, there's things that you enjoy doing, there's things that he enjoys doing. When you merge and you make yourself a team, well, the things I enjoy doing, I can now take that off your plate. And the things you enjoy doing, you can bring it over here. And this makes for a better existence. So that could be really magical. Um, and that's what it should be. Because like, think about even if you're, um, you run a company or you have your job, and a lot of you are directors, VPs, managers. Well, you got to this level, and now some of the grunt work and the things you don't want to do, you start handing off to the 23-year-old the right out of college, and he's got to do that stuff. And that frees you up for the stuff you enjoy doing and the stuff you've earned the right to get to do. Anyway. Whew. That was a lot of talking. Guys, get in there and ask me some questions. Ask me why men don't commit, why your man's disappearing, how to get a guy to kiss you, um, why he's not kissing you. I've been on five dates. What do I do? What do I do in between dates? Ask me what you want to know about because I could ramble here for uh, hours about things you don't want me to talk about. And the whole point of the live stream is to answer stuff you do want me to talk about. So thank you. If you write something in there, I will respond. Uh, let me hit live chat so I can actually see it. Oh, you guys have been writing a ton of stuff. I just had the screen wrong. Whoopsies. Does... DD, does men's superpowers mean it's easier for them to date multiple women because they can focus on what's in front of them? That's a great question. So men are much better at compartmentalizing. Um, so yes, well, both, both sexes can be good at dating multiple people. Um, but I think men are, are better at separating the emotion of it. So if they really like Sally and then they go out with Deborah, well, while they're with Deborah, they're going to forget about Sally and stay focused on, on this person. Um, so, th yes, they are good at that. But, you know, the guy that if you're in a committed relationship, there's a ton of men that will never go out with this person because they're thinking rationally. Um, I'm committed to this person. I, I'm not allowed to do this. I'm not going to do this. And I really like this person and I'm going to stick that out. But, you know, obviously on both sides of the, uh, on the women and the men, uh, both sometimes step out and uh, not ideal. 
All right, what else do you guys got? Sorry for the delay on these questions. I, I had uh, the wrong setting on, so I wasn't seeing any of these, but now I got it. Kim Frederick, men love to feel appreciated and needed. You got it, Kim. That's spot on. Page P. Page P. What are things a new guy will do when they actually like you and not after only one thing? Ooh. That's a good one. Um, these are the things that definitively will tell you if a guy likes you. Um, first off, let's say it's early stages of dating. Um, what does he do in between dates, um, directly preceding them, especially after a first date? What's he do in the first 48 hours? A man that really likes you and is in a stage where he is willing and wanting to commit to someone is going to be aggressive and get things done. Ideally, and men, if you're watching this, do this. If you really like the woman at the end of the date, Get out your calendar, get out your phone, and ask her if she wants to go on a second date. And if she says yes, book it. Book the date. And maybe you don't know what you're going to do yet, but book the time and the date. Um, if she's excited about you, she's going to be all for this. If she's not excited, well, she'll be less inclined to do this. All right, so what does he do in the 48 hours? Now, let's say you've gotten a little further there's two thing, two more things he's going to do. He's going to start talking to you about future plans. So if he books, um, if he's talking about, hey, I've got this, uh, my friend's wedding in, the, in uh, Mexico in six months. I really want you to be my date. Well, that means he's expecting to be with you in six months. Um, so that's beautiful. Then... So future plans, any introductions to friends and family? Most men are not going to introduce you to friends or family unless they are serious about you. You know, if you're going to be their, uh, their friends with benefits person, there's no reason you need to meet the best friend. There's no reason you need to meet mom and dad or cousins or, or anyone because you're most likely not going to be around. But if they want to introduce you to friends and family – um, that's a good thing. Now, I want to talk about this. There's sometimes the inverse happens where the man wants to start doing all this stuff really early and you're not ready yet. You're like still not sure if you like them because remember men know by day two, women know by date 14 on average. So I want to remind all of you, um, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, that men are always going to be the gas pedal, and you're going to be over here being the brake. So he's always going to be pushing the envelope, and it's in regards to everything. He's pushing, hey, I want a date. Hey, I want a date. Hey, I want to have sex with you. Hey, let's go on this vacation. Hey, here's let's do this. Hey, I want you to meet friends and family. Hey, I've got this wedding. Now, if you're not ready for all this, but you like them, you just have to tell him, be like, whoa, Mike, like, I really like you so far. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't I don't want to meet friends and family just yet. Like, maybe we can do that once we get to know each other better first. But you're so fantastic. Like, let's, I'm having so much fun with you. And one day, I, I can't wait to meet your friends. So what did we do there? We complimented. We gave him appreciation. We told him our boundary. And then we gave him hope. One day we're going to do it. You're awesome. Appreciation. Boundary. I'm not ready for that yet. Hope. I can't wait to do that one day when we're ready, when we're both ready. And it, hopefully it'll be soon. He needs all three of those. It's like the sandwich, the boundary sandwich to tell him what you need. If you don't give him appreciation, he's going to feel rejected. And he may never, even if he likes you, he may stop calling you because he's like, well, I really like her, but she's not into me. So I guess I'll just move on. And this happens all the time. You know, men, 
are tired of getting rejected. So if you really like the guy, make sure you give him the appreciation and the boundary and then hope. If he doesn't have hope, he's also going to give up. He'll be like, oh, I really like her. She's fantastic, but it doesn't seem like this is going anywhere. And, you know, I want to get married. I want to ha have commitment. So, okay. Was that helpful? Did I answer your question well, I think? Uh, let's see. Paige, we had three dates last week and asked for tomorrow night too. So does that mean four dates in a week? Yes, it does. That sounds like a lot. Um, I'm not sure. If you've got, like, I want... I love when people come together. I do. But I don't want individuals to lose themselves. When you have a great relationship, it becomes symbiotic. And yes, of course, you spend a lot of time together. But I still want Paige, and we'll call him Ken. I don't know his name. I still want Ken to have his life, and I want Paige for you to have your own life. So if four dates seems like a lot for you, and you'd like, and even if you want a night to just watch TV, and that's your thing. You like watching TV or you like reading a book or you want to go see your friends, family, or go to the gym or any of this stuff. Tell them like, once again, we just gave you the formula. Ken, I really like you and you're fantastic and I want to go on a date, but I'm, uh, I'm not free on Wednesday. How about we do next Tuesday? I'm free. And so you can pace him once again, he's gas pedal. He's like, take her on dates. I like her. I like her. She's amazing. And he's, and you're going to be brake pedal, like pacing him a little bit. And we need to help men with this because not all men know exactly how to pace these things. And we don't know what you want. Um, Paige, is that helpful? And um, guys, if you have more questions, hop in the chat. I'm ready to go. I figured out how to work this thing. And I'm just taking a look. Okay. Um, so we were talking about, I want to go back to what do men need in order to commit forever. So we talked about nab. We got to nab a guy, nab. Um, needed, appreciated. And then we've got the A and the B left. It's N-double-A-B. Needed, appreciated, the next A is accepted. And this is so vital. Especially with the way things are at the moment. Men need to feel accepted. Um, just growing up and... I mean, everyone has their weird idiosyncrasies, right? Every man, every person. And the partner that a man's going to end up with needs to, to love all of him. Just like, you know, maybe he's got that, uh, you know, a little extra weight in his stomach, just a little bit. Or, you know, just like you want to be accepted for everything. Like, no one's perfect. But in your partner's eyes, you want to feel like, wow. Like, I've got this amazing person. Um, and it's funny, when people judge, you know, we're always asked to judge ourselves and then judge other people. And what studies have shown is that when we judge ourselves, we give ourselves like, you know, six, seven, eight, whatever, out of 10. But then when we judge others, we're always much more willing to give them high scores, especially when we care about them, like our mom, our dad, our, our close friends. And they're like, well, how are they? They're a 10. And, you know, people are always shocked when I talk about this study. And if you were that person, you're like, my friends think I'm a 10? Because I think I'm a 7 in that category. But that's how other people view you. And that's what's so vital about acceptance is telling making him feel like he is a 10 out of 10. And so when he feels that he's this amazing to you, he's like, whoa. 
I got a good one that likes me this much. Like, that's something special. That's something I want to be a part of for the rest of my life. Someone who cares about me and feels this way about me and is okay with all my weirdness. Oh, man. I need to figure out a new system. The lighting is so hot. I'm going to start sweating. Whew. All right. What are you guys saying? We had, we've, Paige says, we've had gaps between for work and us doing our own things. Beautiful. So if you've had some gaps and you want to go on some dates, go on some dates. Kim Frederick, most shy guys don't feel that acceptance. That's why it's so important. Thank you. Kim Frederick must know that I am, my love language is words of appreciation because everything you keep saying is making me feel better and, and happy. So thank you. All right. Needed, appreciated, accepted, and then boundaries. And... Um, The part that, the part of boundaries is how you implement it and then what you're doing for your man in terms of it. Now, what I mean is, let, let's talk about this. <clears throat> Men need a roadmap to your happiness. So what happens in most relationships is women are like, oh, I got this amazing guy. And then you're dating for a while and all of a sudden, you know, it was like just escalating like, okay, I like him. I really like him. I like him some more. Oh my God, this guy's incredible. All right, we're dating. Okay, we're still, this is amazing. And then what typically happens is, okay, now he's just coasting. He's taking me on dates. Like, we, you know, every Friday we go to dinner, he's texting, calling me every day, but He's not buying me anything. He's not buying me flowers. He's not really trying that hard. The effort's going about the same as it's always been. Where? What happened to the courting? The courting stopped. He was courting me during this, and now he's not. Um, and what happens is he doesn't know. He forgot. And it's a math formula for a man. His brain, his mathematical brain, went, well, one plus one equals two with her. So I've been taking her to dinner on Friday, and I've been doing that for a while, and she seemed to like me back then, and so she'll continue to like me because this is the formula. One plus one equals two. But that's not how humans work. That's not how women work. But men don't get that. Um, so he's just going to keep doing that, and you're going to go, oh, it would be so romantic if he did something. Like, it would be amazing if he surprised me or if we went on a weekend getaway or he even just sent me a text message that said, you're so beautiful or I woke up next to you and you look so stunning and like you have the best smile, something, anything. But he just gets in his routine. And you and as a woman are like, it would be so nice if you would just do something and surprise me in spont spontaneity. But it's not going to happen. So he doesn't know what to do. You're not telling him what to do, and you wish he would just figure it out. He's not. He's not going to. So the roadmap to your happiness is articulating what you need. And he needs to do this too. I'm not letting him off the hook. He needs to tell you what he wants in all aspects of how to communicate, how to date each other, how to have sex together. Everything should be chatted about and, and, and optimized for your relationship. But, all right, so we got him doing one plus one equals two, and he's coasting. Then you're going to hop in and be like, hey, it would be so amazing if you'd take me on a date sometime. You'd make me feel so special. Or we have the most amazing relationship, so give him the compliment first. And you'd make me so happy if we could go on a date sometime. So then he hops in takes you on a date sometime and you go, Oh, on the date you go, this is so amazing. I'm having so much fun. 
you're so fantastic, Mike. Like, thank you. And I'm just so lucky. He goes, whoa. All I had to do was take her on a date, and now I'm getting, like, these massive compliments and this massive appreciation. Bingo, bango. So the key to this, to make it worth his while, he is still a math formula guy. So he's going, all right, I'm, let's say he plans some amazing, uh, some great dinner at this really nice restaurant, and it costs him, let's call it, um, you know, $170 of dinner. And then you go like, this is the best dinner of my life. Like, you're so romantic, and I'm so happy to be with you, and blah, blah, blah. That compliment is worth more than $170. So you always want your compliment to be a little higher than the value that maybe he gave you in terms of the date. So like even when we go back to the coffee, when he got the sugar, when you're sitting down at Starbucks and he grabs you a sugar and you go, wow, you're such a gentleman. Thank you. Most people, when they just get the sugar, they just go, thanks. Don't think a second of it. But if you he, if you say, wow, you're such a gentleman, thank you, that walk over to get the sugar and the walk back, he got compensated in your appreciation more than the value of him walking over to grab the sugar and more than what he expected. He was just expecting to get thanks, but he got the, you're such a gentleman. So anytime you're exceeding the compensation or, or the effort he had to put in, it becomes worth it for him. And it makes him want to do it again and do more and do more and do more. And you're going to get more out of your man. Like I remember I would, um, when I was living with my ex, I would, I would vacuum and I got in the habit of wanting to vacuum because she'd be like, Oh, you're so sexy. Like I love when you vacuum, like you're so, Oh my God, your arms look so amazing. And then when I'd finish, she'd come give me a big kiss. Well, guess what happened? I started vacuuming a whole lot more because I got these massive compliments <clears throat> and all I had to do was go back and forth with this silly contraption a few times. It was worth it. Absolutely. All right, what are we talking about? Kim Frederick. When we judge ourselves, we are very hard on ourselves. So it's nice to hear someone else's opinion of us. Yeah, absolutely. And the lesson learned here is don't be so hard on ourselves. We're all doing a good job. And someone out there thinks we're a 10, even though maybe we think we're a 7. All right, beautiful women. What other questions do you have about dating, relationships, sex, love, anything? I'm ready to rock. Okay. Let's talk boundaries a little more. I want to um so we're giving the guy the roadmap to your happiness. So we're telling him what you want. I just want to review again on execution because um, this is the part where, where people mess the whole thing up. There's a lot of women out there that they get to the point where, you know, really anyone, any woman above the age of 28 starts realizing their self-worth and they're like, oh, I'm not putting up with any crap anymore. And I love that. I love women not putting up with crap. But if you execute it in this domineering way, you're going to chase men away and no one's going to be happy. So if he, for example, and this is the easiest example, you're on date seven. You're cooking dinner together at someone's house. And then he, he starts to get frisky with you and, he's, and he wants to have sex, clearly. You're not ready yet. And you go, whoa, I'm not ready for sex. What are you doing? Get, get off me. 
And he just looked, whoa, I thought we were good. I didn't know. I'm sorry. And he gets very taken back. But you really, really like this guy. You're just not ready to have sex. Well, we need to execute it with some grace and, and, and in our feminine side so that, you know, we keep things going with this guy. So it's like, Mike, like, wow, you are sexy. And I am having so much fun getting to know you. I'm not ready to have sex yet. But... Oh, man, when it's time, I'm going to rock your world. Or something like that. Use your own words. But once again, I want to review how we're doing this. We're doing it in a soft way. We're giving him the compliment. Give him the compliment. Give him the boundary. And then give him hope. Compliment, boundary, hope. Compliment, boundary, hope. CBH just came up with an acronym. Is that what it is? CBH. So compliment. I'm having so much fun with you. I'm enjoying getting to know you. Boundary. I'm not ready for sex yet. Hope. But when it's time, which may be pretty soon, we're going to have some fun. Better believe it. Okay. What do we got? Page P, what are some unique date ideas? Oh, baby. Here we go. So, dating. In the early stages of dating, there's two things you are trying to accomplish. In my brain, in my opinion, there's two things. And this is how a man's brain works. He doesn't know this is what he's doing, but this is really how humans are doing things. If you are feeling an emotion, especially a happy one or a good one, you're bonding with that person. Now, all these emotions cause you to want to, well, you're feeling things, that's exciting, can draw you to this person. The other thing you're doing, also equally important, these are both 50% important, is you are determining if they have the values, have the things you need for a life partner. You know you need someone who eats healthy, that plays sports, that um, is a great communicator, um, is financially successful, blah, 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 whatever you need. So dates are either figuring out if they have these things through conversation or maybe activity you figured out, but mostly through conversation you kind of can start figuring these things out. Or doing an activity and causing emotion. So it's hard to kind of do both of these. It, it can be challenging. But this is the thing that gets guys and women hooked is feeling emotions. So how do you cause these emotions? You figure out what um, the person enjoys doing and you go do these dates, especially if you can do things that they enjoy doing that they haven't done yet of that activity. Let me give you some examples. I love hiking. A lot of people out there love hiking. If you could go hike at a location neither one of you have hiked at yet, that's going to be fun. That's going to cause an emotion. That's going to get the heart moving, um, get you walking, get you moving, get the, the blood flowing. And that's going to cause some happiness and some enjoyment. These are good emotions. That's He's having fun. Um, maybe your partner likes playing soccer, doing yoga. Maybe you like all these things. Go play soccer together. Go to yoga. Now, yoga is such a cool date because um, it gets you out of that daily grind where you're doing things, doing things, doing things. Parts of yoga, especially um, at the end of it, for example, um, or at the beginning, it's quiet time, and you're meditating, or you're doing uh, some thinking, some inner thinking. So let's say you're doing yoga for a minute or two at the beginning where it's you know, stretching or om or whatever, or shabasana while you're laying down and just laying there because you're done with your workout. You're resetting. 
you're getting into pleasure. You're getting into what do I want with my life? How was my day? You're checking in on your body. All that gets you to a calm state, gets you to a happy state. And so if you do the hour yoga class and then maybe you go get a drink after, or you go grab an appetizer. By the time it's time to talk, you're already feeling amazing from yoga, happy. You know, you got out of work mode. You're now in pleasure, fun mode. And now it's get to know each other mode. So any type of activity, especially yoga, is great to then subway into get to know each other time. Also great is the hiking. Um, other unique date ideas. Going to a park, going on walking, uh, frisbee golf is, is interesting. Going to a museum. Um, going to bars that have activities like pool, darts, to have a drink. Um, in L.A., I think they used to have this. I don't know if they still do. They had turtle racing. It's a fun date, as long as you don't feel bad for the turtles. Um, maybe you have a dog. Maybe you take a dog for a walk. Going to the beach, going to sit on the beach, going to walk the beach. Um, I like walking dates. I like any activity um, that involves some movement so it, you're not just stationary. Um, going to trivia, um, maybe going to play uh, a board, uh, a bar that has like Jenga or Connect Four or something. Those are all good first dates. Um, but yeah, it really depends on what you like and what your partner likes and hopefully finding something that, that meshes. Um, I can definitely think back to some of the times I met partners that it almost flowed because we had all these things in common where we'd be on the first date and I'd, and we would start to like each other. And she'd talk about three or four things that we both mutually liked. And it was like, well, we're going to do that on date two. We're going to do that on date four and five. And it would start almost planning themselves because we had all these things that we enjoyed doing. And then also being smart enough to realize when those type of dates should happen. Like maybe one of them might be like an overnighter because you're going to go white water rafting and it's far away. It's like, well, if we make it to date 15, we're going white water rafting together. And that's kind of exciting because it's like you're, you're setting a goal for your new partnership. Well, on day 15, we're going white water rafting. Let's get there. Um, does that help? Let's read some of this stuff. D, your message just got restricted. I'm not sure why. Must be in my settings. Sue Ludwig, my first everything out of the blue, has contacted me after 29 years. Don't know what to think. Mind blown. And he references the first a lot and sends me texts from work saying he's thinking of me. Then he says he's thinking of parts in particular. Ew. Um... So you were excited. Now he's talking about sex. Maybe you're less excited. Is that right? Let's take it from what it potentially could be. The man is sexually attracted to you. This is a good thing. We like when men are sexually attracted to you. Now let's go back to our, our pedals. He's going to be the gas. You're going to be the brake. He's gassing up saying, you're sexy. I want to have sex with you. Now, your job is to be the, the break, but in a feminine way. Like, hey, I think you're sexy too, but I want to get to know you. I don't have sex until, you know, we know each other again. Let's get reacquainted. And if he'll refocus and then, you know, ask you, what are your interests? What do you like to do? What are your favorite things? Tell me about your family, blah, blah, blah. If he refocuses, great. If not, keep on them and keep saying like, hey, like, yes, I know I'm sexy, but what else? If he can refocus, cool. If not, then he clearly just wants sex and get rid of them. Um, but I would give him a few chances at that. Um, once again, men <clears throat> men are very single focused. 
and compartmentalize in their thinking. So if a man gets on sex thinking, uh, it can be a little difficult to get them back onto non-sex thinking. Um, so um, see what you can do. What's been your favorite date ever? Page P. Oh boy. I like yoga dates if we're just talking about an early stage date. We have axe throwing in town. That is a good one. Go throw some axes. That's basically the equivalent of darts. It allows you to kind of go back and forth. It can be a little playfulness in terms of, um, you know, when you give the darts to the other person, you can touch some hands. You can joke on how they're doing with the score. It allows for some playfulness and also getting to know each other, um, which is beautiful. What's the line if a woman wants a man to feel accepted, but she likes to banter and tease too? Should she abstain? I think you should you should banter and tease if that's your personality. Um, I think it's a lost art at this point um, of flirting. And I think banter and teasing is flirting. And a lot of us... Uh, are not great at it anymore. We're so used to online dating, going to the workplace and not being allowed to do that. So then when we are doing that, that's good. And we're causing a man to feel fun. But once again, still we have the gas pedal and the brake. And part of it is, you know, not having sex until both of you are ready. And so when you're teasing and touching him, he may think you're ready sooner than maybe you actually are. So you need to, Tease, but also be and continue to be soft, but then have that hard shell where you commit to what your um, your boundary is, and once again keep doing it in a in a nice way. Like, hey, you're so fantastic, and don't make it weird. Like, oh, I'm not ready, yet. or like, my God, don't touch me. Like, that's gonna kill the mood. But like, hey, you're so fantastic. This is so great. I'm not ready yet, but one day. So yes, keep teasing and having fun. Fun is good. Joy Tucker, what's the best way to handle a guy ghosting you after they say we're falling for you and you couldn't answer the same? I like him a lot and said so, but just not there emotionally yet. So this is, I would need to know more in terms of the ghosting. Has it been a week, a day? Have you reached out to him and he's not responding? Um, I'll just assume that he's been gone and you have reached out and he's not responding. Um, and you're not there and you're still not there yet. Um, he may, this is a common problem that I talked about earlier. Um, it's been two and a half weeks. Yeah, unfortunately, the guy's gone. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, men do have some dignity and some pride, uh, and all men have varying levels. Um, for myself, if there's a shame scale and having shame and having no shame, I sit mostly over here in the no shame where I don't really care um, because – Ultimately, I look at things as like, well, if I really like someone, I don't care about anything. I I will embarrass myself, like, let's go. But some men are over here and have some dignity. So if they say, I love you, and they mean it, and you're not there yet, and maybe you're not getting there, and you tell them they're not there, it's like, well, I'm ready to go. I'm available. This hurts. And because this hurts, I'm going to go find someone else that maybe is on the same page as me and gets there at the same time. And it's because men look inside themselves and they go, all right, I know whether I like someone by date two. And they don't realize that women take by date 14. So it becomes hard for a man to be patient because the way his brain works is it comes like this. 
and doesn't understand how another person it doesn't go like that like you're not there yet you must not like me if you don't like me then i must move on um so unfortunately it's not your fault not being there yet um and i don't know how you executed it like giving him hope and and giving him compliments but um now that's been two and a half weeks you might be in trouble uh, and I'm not sure how you reached out to him or if he just stopped responding to everything, phone calls, texts. If he has stopped responding to phone calls, texts, something you can do. Time to move on. B. Patrick, what kind of guys do you coach? Uh, all of them? Um in terms of clients in general, I've coached anywhere from 20 to literally 80 years old of both sexes in lots of countries that speak English um, all over the United States, California, New York, Florida, Maryland, Texas, Utah, most of the states, England, France, um, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, Japan, Australia, uh, you name it. I've probably coached someone there um, as long as they speak English, the United Arab Emirates, Israel. Um, I've coached men that are really shy and don't have social skills and want to learn how to talk to women, want to learn how to do online dating. And I've coached men that have never had sex before. I've coached men that have decent social skills, a good job, and just want to find someone who wants to commit and they want to get married. Uh, I've coached everything. I'm um, not sure if that answers your question or if you had something very specific you wanted to ask me. DD, no, Mike, I mean, if you like to tease, but you want the guy to feel accepted and not bruise his self-esteem, no sex involved. Uh, I'd be careful with that. Um, men, for the most part, when they have sex or they're having sex for one purpose, they want to orgasm. Uh, women are having sex be most of the time for the enjoyment of the experience, eventually an orgasm, but the whole buildup and the whole preheat of the oven and the expl exploration and the exploring each other's body, the building of intimacy, the building of getting to know each other. Uh, men are less concerned about that. They just want to come. Um, so if you're going to tease and then build him all the way up and then not deliver, you're going to piss him off. And... If you piss him off, that could lead him to not calling you again. And quite frankly, if you're not ready to go all the way, you can do a little bit. You can go to first, you can go to second. But, I, um, you know, this is a tough one because, uh, once again, you it's risk-reward. Um, you're risking pissing him off, and the reward is you get to have a little fun. Um, so you need to figure out what's right for you and experiment with that. Um, certain men you're going to piss off and they're going to not call you again. Um, and other men are going to love it and other men enjoy exploration and enjoy the teasing and the fun and they'll be excited by it and they're going to come back for more. Um, so you should have that conversation with the man. Like once you realize, you know, you're making out and you're petting, be like, whoa, <sighs> like I'm getting like really turned on and I don't know what to do. Like, you know, I'm happy to like, you know, keep making out, but I'm not ready for sex yet. And you're getting me really, really hot. So like, is it okay to keep kissing or since we're not ready to have sex, should we, you know, just go do something else? So now you've told them where you're at and you guys can make a decision on what you want to do. Uh, Joy Tucker, anything I can do to help? Thank you for addressing it. Um, I mean, there's nothing. Once you've texted, once you've phone call, um, unless you've changed your mind, if you're like, man, I've been an idiot and I really love you, then or I'm in love with you and you're amazing, you could send him that call, that voicemail, and see if he gets back to you and you do it once. Um, and if he gets back to you, cool. But otherwise... If a man wants you, he's going to come get you. 
Um, so, and if you haven't changed your mind about this, then it, it's, it's probably done. And he's done because he wants someone who's on the same page as him. And he feels like you should be there by now. And, and, and it's not your fault. And it's not his fault. It's just he wants someone there. And you're not there. Uh, time to move on. You ever do like a dating B Patrick? Do you ever do like a dating boot camp? Um, yes, I'm doing one in two weeks. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these. Um, I'd say I have. He's a long-term client. I have him coming for a weekend. He's a shy guy. He wants to learn how to interact with um, with women. So I'm gonna teach him how to how to start conversations with women. Um, both during the day and then at night. Um, and he's already went through my long, he's been with me for, I think, nine months or so. Um, and I had him local when I was living in New York and I just moved to LA. So he wanted to come out and do this. So to answer your question, yes, I do boot camps, but I'm not, that's not my way of doing things. I'd rather do a six month program. Reason being is um, I don't believe in boot camps. They're awesome and they're fun and you're going to get a lot accomplished in two days. And, but then you forget everything, you know, you know, if all of us have went to school at some point and we know how it works. If you do something for two days, a week later, you forgot everything and you just invested all this money on the two days and you got nothing versus what I like to do is a six month program where I teach you how to do one thing. Not, I don't teach you 15 things. I teach you one thing. Now you get to practice that for two weeks. I see you again. I teach you another one or two things. You practice for two weeks. And then you have access to me for six months, whether you need to call me, text me, email me. We can talk through things and start inching you closer to the goal. And for if you're specifically talking about a skill set of how to speak to women or how to get social skills improved or body language skills, uh, you're naive if you think that's changing overnight. Um, that is a skill set that takes years and years and years to hone, but you can start making very drastic, um, drastic growth in that um, over sustained effort over time. Uh, so basically I'd stay away from those types of things unless you've already went through some programs and you've done some research and you just wanna do something like that and have a fun experience but if you actually want results, I, which is why I built the six month program is I want to massively help people, then, um, then do that. Whoa, we've been talking for an hour. All right, guys, if you have any last minute questions, um, I need to run in a few minutes. So we'll do <clears throat> one last one or one last two. And thank you for all these amazing questions, guys. Um, this was far exceeded my expectations in terms of quality of questions, quantity of questions, um, very thoughtful. Um, you guys are fantastic. Thank you. All right, what do we got? DD, how to tell a guy you met online who texts you too much that you don't want to text a lot before the date? I love my formula. It works on everything. Um, it's the compliment boundary hope is um, so basically say hey so far it seems like we have a lot of a lot in common and this is going great you seem fantastic uh, I'm not big into texting a lot before dates um, so how about we'll just um, we'll see you on Tuesday and we'll see how it goes boom then you're done and sometimes men don't catch the hint because we know this happens a lot, unfortunately. If he doesn't catch the hint, just slow down your how, how quick you respond, and it kind of solves that way. If you respond, um, you know, if you're responding to him every five minutes, well, he gets um, that documents like, oh, I, it's okay to text her if she's going to keep responding every five minutes. Then I'll keep writing every five minutes. But if you wait five hours, you wait a day, and then even if you wait a day and then he responds five minutes later, you wait another day. And this slows it all down. But the most effective, uh, not passive aggressive way is communicating it to him. 
hey, you seem great. Seems like we have a lot in common. I'm not a huge texter. Um, how about I just see you on Tuesday or whenever your date is? So I hope that helps. Uh, page P, do you suggest a specific amount of time to be exclusive until you turn into exclusivity? Um, it depends how often you're seeing each other. Um, I give men um, that you're actively seeing either 60 or 90 days, depending on what you're comfortable with. Um, if you're dating a new person, you're seeing each other about once a week. Um, if he doesn't ask you to be exclusive in 60 days or 90, it's time to leave. Um, we don't have time for this. If you're actively seeking commitment, marriage, or a life partner, um, and you're really focused on this, and you're not ready, you're not playing games, and you're basically, if you're one of my clients, we don't freaking mess around. We either we get it done or we slide them along. And even if you're not my client, but you are highly focused and ready to accomplish things, this is your process. You don't mess around. You treat this like it's your business or it's your baby or any goal that you're trying to accomplish. You need a strategy and you don't mess around with guys that are, are not committing. Um, and so everyone here probably gets it. You know, you hire, if you want to get in shape or you want to lose weight, you build this massive meal plan and you have this macro way of you're going to eat and this is what I'm going to eat and this is how it's going to cause me to lose weight and you're tracking calories and your workout plan, I'm going to do X. I have um, my personal trainer. They've got me doing this workout. They know how many calories I'm burning. And so if you, and that's what I do for, for dating and online dating and taking care of your love life. Here's my specific system. Let's go implement it. If this guy's not on the same page as us, see you later. If he is, let's keep moving forward. <clears throat> and let's follow this exact strategy that I've used over and over again for the last 10 years on how to take a single person and move them into a relationship. We're going to use this methodology and just slide you through the program. And a lot of people, probably not the ones watching this video right now, just treat dating like, oh, it'll happen when it'll happen. You can't. In anything in your life, when you wanted it, you had to come up with a system to do it. Hey, I want to get into college. Okay, I've got to fill out these nine applications, and then when I get accepted to five or six of them, I'm going to go to this one. Hey, I want to raise it at work. Hey, boss, I want to do that job. I'm currently here. What do I need to do to get there? Well, you need to start coming to work a little earlier. You need to finish all these projects. You need to um, have, you know, be under budget by a million dollars. Whatever you need to do. Okay, boss, I'm going to do that. I'll report back when that's all done. Then you go do that. You go to the boss, say, hey, you told me to do X, Y, Z. I did X, Y, Z. Can I go do this job now? Same thing with dating. Hey, here's what we're going to do. Here's the system. Here's how we accomplish our goals. <clears throat> if you guys would like some help and would like to work with me for online dating, I'm giving you a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with me to talk it through and see if we should do some coaching. So if you're wildly serious about getting coaching with me and letting me be your partner and us teaming up to move you down to the goal line and get this done for you, um, I've got a link to set up a call um, in the comments. Do um, you guys see that? It should be down there unless I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but if not, right when I close this, I'm going to go in there and check it. And anyway, guys, thank you for joining me on this journey to chat. Uh, I'm going to start doing a lot more of these because I'm having a blast um, talking to you guys. I wish I could put the video on you guys too so then you guys could tell your questions and we can interact even more. But if we work one-on-one, -on -one, then we can really do that. And that that's what I love doing. I love interacting with people and you know, giving you guys the information you need. Thanks again for spending time with me. I love all of you and uh, we'll see you. I'm going to put out a video uh, non-live stream every Tuesday and probably uh, interviews with other folks on Thursdays. And then I'll do um, some of these live streams. I'll try to sprinkle them in uh, hopefully like once a month, maybe once every three weeks or so. See how timing works. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.